Which brings us into our main story, our next story on the show tonight. All about the N-word. All about the N-word and freedom of speech. All about the N-word and freedom of speech. So, this incorporates a story um, from, I think this was September 2020, if I recall correctly, September 2020. And um, this incorporates a story from when a University of Ottawa professor was, I believe she was fired, or it says you're suspended, suspended for using the N-word in class. And this was like right after BLM, right? So, pretty keck. And basically, there was a academic freedom committee that was created after the fact to take a look at whether safe spaces should be made on campus or not. So we'll dive into this here. Uh, we'll be heading into our cozy chat time in just a little bit. So get ready for some super chats. Send in some super chats. Send in some super chats. Support Canada first. Support all the great things that we're doing here. Support the show. Ask a question. Send in a comment, concern, whatever it may be. And uh, we'll dive into our super chats and our cozy chat time in just a little bit here. But uh, we have a little excerpt here to catch everybody up on this um, story here initially to begin with. So it says, Quebec University classrooms are not safe spaces and post-secondary institutions should not be imposing the use of so-called trigger warnings according to a report released Tuesday by a committee on academic freedom. And this is a white pill. You know, I see this as a, as a pretty nice white pill. We've been getting a lot of black pills up here in the Great White North lately. But this is a white pill. This is a white pill, I think, dude. The provincial government created the committee in March in reaction to reports about professors in the province who avoided teaching controversial material out of fear of confrontation with students. The committee is also in response to controversy at the University of Ottawa, where a professor was suspended in 2020 for using the N-word during a class lecture. Universities are specific institutions. It's not high school. It's a place where you advance knowledge through debates, said Alexandre Cloutier. Alexandre Cloutier, a former Parti Québécois cabinet minister tasked by the government to lead the committee. The report included results from a poll of 1,079 professors and 992 university students, indicating that 60% of teachers said they engaged in self-censorship and avoided using certain words. 82% of teachers said that they were in favor of no restrictions regarding on what they could teach or say in class. Cluche, now vice chancellor at University du Quebec at Chica Chicotimi, I can't. I'm not French. I am not a fucking frog, so I'm not going to be pronouncing this university name that well. University de Quebec at Chicoutimi recommended the government adopt a bill that would create a universal definition of academic freedom and would protect that freedom on university campuses across the province. It says here, I think that we forgot what the mission is of universities, Cloutier told reporters on Tuesday. It's taken for granted, but what we have seen is that it's not the case, and a law would define it. The report makes several other recommendations, including against universities imposing so-called trigger warnings, statements that warn students about potentially offensive or traumatic classroom material. In October 2020, Premier Francois Legault, Francois Legault criticized the University of Ottawa for its decision to suspend the professor who used a derogatory word for black people in class. Teachers should be able to exercise their freedom of teaching and researching. Higher Education Minister Daniel McCann said in a statement, this is what allows our society to move forward. So, a little bit of a longer excerpt there, but I wanted to include it all. We got a white pill. And of course, the white pill comes from the French. The same people that just booted out that Muslim teacher for wearing a hijab to class. And we had that debate on whether it's based or not, right? And... 
you know, I picked this story, one, because it's kind of funny, because it's about a teacher saying the N-word, which is based, which is awesome. But because, as I've been talking about a lot the past couple months, Bill C-36 is right on the horizon. And it's, an, it's extremely vital that we highlight and that we emphasize and that we continue to take W's in this field, in this area, right? When it comes to free speech, we have to defend this at all costs. You know, when it comes to when we're in power and we see these communists out there and our society is polarizing, you have know, these gross freak communists spewing their rhetoric, we can worry about that later down the line if you catch my drift. But right now, free speech is vital. And anything that is going to be anti-free speech, anything that diminishes our ability to communicate right-wing ideas and to just free think, to speak freely about anything and convey any thought or convey any story, we have to protect that. Under Bill C-36, they want to take that away explicitly from right-wingers in Canada, explicitly targeting right-wingers. That's what they are going to do. And it's like, have you ever said the N-word? Have you guys ever said the N-word? You know, you're singing along to your favorite rap song. You're singing along to Kanye. You know, you know, you know that he's, you know, everybody knows the one lyric. I hate these niggas more than the Nazis, right? You guys, we've all sang that. I think that we've all sang that. Along with, you know, you're listening to like Baby Keem or, you know, you're listening to... Uh, to like coaches, or you know, you're listening to whoever else, whoever else, right? You're gonna say it. You're gonna say it. And you're lying. You're absolutely lying if you are are actually going to say that you oh, I've never said the N-word. I've never said the N-word. It's okay, you're allowed to. You're you're allowed to say it. Okay? In our generation, it is permissible to say, regardless of your skin color, as long as you're right wing. As long as you're right wing, you have the N-word pass. You know, just take a look at, you know, anybody within the right wing circles. Within It can even be broader. You can even go to, like, the center. Anybody just who is right of center. And they don't care. And they don't care. And I'm talking about black people don't care. They don't care. If, if you have right-wing black people and, you know, you say, you know, nigga, they'll just be like, hey, what's up, my cracker? And then everything's cool. It's like a brother moment. It's like a brother moment, you know? And on university campuses, we should be able to say whatever we want. You know, first it's the N-word. Then it's, you know, it's, oh, you can't say like tranny. You can't make fun of transgender people. And we're at the point in which you can't even say retarded. You can't even call somebody a retard. That's like, they call it the R slur on campus. They'll call it the R slur. The R slur. You can't say retarded. It's like, you're retarded if you call it the R slur. You are actually like retarded. You're like the people that I see on my TikTok feed. And these things, are, you know, I'm kind of joking, obviously. But these things show a greater trend of our enemies, of these evil people, of these leftists attempting to take away our speech. We have the ability to say anything. And this is the slippery slope. It's the, it's, the, it's the exact same as what happened with the LGBTQ issue. It's the exact same thing that happened with within our school systems dating back to like the 60s when they started to be, high, you know, lots of leftists started, started to infiltrate. The slippery slope is real and this applies to free speech. You can't ban anything because then you're going to keep taking away and taking away and taking away. And with the people who are in power currently, they are going to take away and take away and take away from us and take away from normal society and take away from sane Canadians that want to see a difference, right? These universities should be ours. These university campuses, these institutions, they should be right wing and they should teach right wing ideology. They should be chocked full of right-wing groups and organizations. And this is something that we have to work towards. So it's, it's fantastic to see that, you know, our French, our, the French, they're, they're giving me hope. The French out there, they're giving me some hope over in Quebec. 
the French over in Quebec. They're giving me some hope here. Because, yeah, you know, if, if a teacher has to say the N-word in some, like, story... Actually, I believe it was an English teacher, and she ended up saying the N-word, like, in some book. You know, it's, it's not like this professor even just, like, called somebody the N-word. I'm pretty sure that she just read it, like, out of a book. Which, I mean, we all had to do back in high school anyways. I'm not too sure about our Yankee friends in chat, but anybody in Canada... Um, it's To Kill a Mockingbird, right? I'm pretty sure, is it that? I'm pretty sure it's, it's, it's in that book. And we had to read that book, and on a, on a certain page, you know, it says the N-word. And some of the, I know that in my class, we got to say it. We, we got to say it in our class. Based. It was fucking based. Now, I know that some teachers will, like, bleep it out or say, like, not to say it, but... It's part of a book. It's part of a story. It's important that we utilize every word in our vocabulary when conveying ideas. It truly is. And, like, I get, like, the premise of, like, I was kind of memeing earlier. But, like, it's true. It is absolutely true. We have to make sure that we can expand upon ideas in, in any way. Right? So, it's fantastic to see this. It's, like, 923. So, I'll stop harping on the... <laughs> I'll stop harping on this issue. Very epic, very based. We love our French bros out there. We love our French bros, don't we, folks? We love our French bros standing up for N-word usage. 